Okay, guys, welcome back to the Burp Sweep class. So I needed something that I could do. I, I needed a way that worked for me. Again, me not having a development background was the primary contributor to this. So what I did for my first two years was literally I was just the tool guy. I ran every tool that I could possibly find against every single website, bar none. Hands down, if there was a tool I found on Packetstorm or, uh, you know, Root Shell or you know, anywhere, no arm, someone was talking about a hacking tool and it did web stuff dark code, man, anywhere. I ran it against the site, figuring that, you know, if I run enough tools, you know, I, at least I won't miss anything. And that was some pretty flawed logic, but it was the best I could do at the time. And I watched a lot of guys do a lot of manual testing and I asked a lot of questions. I got a lot of really bad answers, but over time I kind of derived my process, right? So. I want you to use my process, and it doesn't mean that you have to keep my process, but you definitely can build on my process. On every single page of a website, I ask three questions. If the answer to one of those questions is yes, then I know the attack path that I need to go down. So that becomes that becomes like my, my playbook. You know, it's really easy for me to just go, okay, I'm looking at a page, ask myself three questions. If the answer to question one is no, move to question two. Answer to question two is yes, go down this attack path. That's it. So my three questions are, is it talking to a database? Can I or someone else see what I type? Does it reference a file? And it's easy for me to flow from there. So. Is it talking to a database? So is it talking to a database? Well, if I see parameter passing, something equals something in the address bar, then for me, I go, okay, he's talking to a database. Let me see if I can do something with it. So as an example, you'll see that I'm looking at this website. And then if you look here, there's nothing after the address. There's nothing here. So for me, the answer to question number one is no. So I'm looking for something called parameter passing. When I look for parameter passing, if I click one of these links, what you see after the address bar is what I'm talking about. This stuff here is what I'm gonna call parameter passing. So you're gonna see a page name followed by a question mark, followed by a parameter name with an equal sign and then the parameter value. So it's page name, question mark, parameter name, parameter value. So in this case, the page name is bookdetail.aspx. Question mark, the parameter name is ID equals the parameter value, which is one. This is what I look for. Now, when I see this, I know, hey, there's parameter passing. And the way that I test this parameter passing is right here, I'm going to insert a single quote right here. And I'm going to load that single quote either immediately after the parameter value or in place of the parameter value. Now, as soon as I do that, you'll see that the website blows up. When it blows up, I look at the error. So you can see right here, it's an SQL error. You keep seeing SQL all throughout, right? Right? That's SQL injection. Now, sometimes you have different types of parameters. So you have, if you see everything in the address bar, we're going to call this a get request. So when you have a get request, the parameter passing is in the address bar. Now that's not always the case because anytime your system is doing a critical transaction, 
you should not be using a Git request. So if you're doing a database insert, a database update, a login, anytime you're doing a, a purchase, anytime you're doing a critical transaction, you should not use a Git request. You, the developer should be using a post request. So if, for example, you see that I go to this login page, right? Now that I'm on this login page, you're gonna see that I'm gonna use, uh, type in the word hello with a password hello. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up Burp Suite right quick. So I'm firing up Burp Suite and I'm gonna use Foxy Proxy to set myself to Burp Suite, okay? All right, so now let's, that's good. And we'll turn intercept off, okay? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say go, okay? Now when you look at that, right, my login failed. Now I'm gonna go look at this in here. Now, when I look at this post, if I go look, this post request has parameters. So as you're looking at this post request, you can see, hey, I have parameters. So you have parameter passing. What you would do is right here, you would say, you know, I want to mess with these parameters. So you would insert, you know, uh, you know your, your single quote here. Right in in here's where I sent the username. Here's where I sent the password. Right here. So if I want, you know, you can say this. Here's where you perform that attack. Now this is why you use a proxy because I can't manually interact with it in the browser. So using a proxy like Burp Suite, Paros, Web Scarab, Fiddler, you know, you can use a proxy because that's what's going to allow you to get in there and mess with these things, okay? If I can help you learn about who we are and hopefully if you're willing to join us. This is InfoSec Addicts.